So this is how we're actually going to make it so we can share it across the network. So I'm going to use SMB because again, that's the most common one used. We're going to click add. We're going to select this. We're going to come over to pool one and we're actually going to do a data set because that's what's going to be recommended and we'll just call it share. And you can name this whatever you might want to. I click create. And all this is doing is just putting another directory pretty much inside of that uh, data set that we made previously. We're going to come over here and click save. And we're going to start the SMB service. So now after system restart says everything should be good. So I'm actually just going to come over here. I'm going to reboot the system really quick and then we'll be right back. And after a minute or so, the system's going to come back up. We're going to get our login page again. And I'm just going to log in. And we should be all good now. You can see SMB is on. So we should be good if I come over here to whack whack to it. I'll just change my IP so it's going to be 127 and you could put the actual share in that we made or we don't need to so we should be able to whack whack to it. Over here it's just asking for some credentials so I'm just going to put in my username and over here you can see it actually comes up with that share we just made and there's nothing in here so if I just come over here I can make a folder and now we actually have some data in here. So there are some other options in here that you can take a look at. If you're really going to be using this NAS for some serious storage, whether it's important files, whatever it might be, you may want to really take a look into the data protection tab. This is going to be how it kind of syncs your data out or makes snapshots and backups of it to make sure that you don't lose it. This is different than using a RAID or anything else. Remember, RAID isn't an actual backup. It's just redundancy. This over here is going to be actually how you save your data if it comes into some sort of hardware failure or anything else. So if you're going to go in and actually use this for important storage, you might want to take some time to learn how this works and really make sure that you have this set up the way you need. I don't really have anything important being saved on it, so it's not going to be something that we're going to really cover today. I actually like TrueNAS, I think, a lot out of all the NAS operating systems that I've used. It has a really nice UI, it works really well, and it's super simple to set up and manage.